Hello everyone, welcome to Vinam Guidance. This is Dr. Anuta Sharma and in this video we are going to talk about fluorescence spectroscopy. So let's get started. Uh, fluorescence spectroscopy also known as fluorimetry or spectrofluorimetry is a type of electromagnetic uh, spectroscopy which basically analyzes the fluorescence present in a molecule or a sample based on its fluorescent properties. Fluorescence spectroscopy involves the use of light, usually the ultraviolet light, which causes the electrons of molecules of certain compounds to excite and then uh, it results in the emission of light, which is usually uh, visible light, but it can also be a different type of light. So um, fluorescence is actually a type of luminescence and uh, fluorescence spectroscopy or fluorescence is basically a radiative emission. So two things are required. It happens, the radiative emission, it happens or the fluorescence happens when a molecule or the electron in the molecule they absorb energy and this energy which is absorbed has to be a, a particular wavelength at, and at that wavelength this molecule should have a transition dipole moment. So the energy should be absorbed at a, at a wavelength where the molecule can have a transition dipole moment which means the dipole moment at which the electrons present in the molecule they can move from they, they can move among different states so they can move from a ground state to an excited state. Let's look at this principle in detail using the Jablonski diagram which explains uh, the movement of electrons between different electronic and trans, uh, vibrational states. See every electronic state also has different vibrational states so if you look at the ground state it is going to have certain vibrational states also the excited state excited electronic state also has vibrational state it is only in the case of molecules atoms only have electronic states they do not have vibrational states so the uh, electrons present in singlet ground state they're going to absorb energy in the form of um, ultraviolet light and that energy uh, should be at a wavelength where the molecule has transitional dipole movement so it is capable of moving from a ground state to the excited state so when different electrons they move from ground state to excited state they're going to move to different vibrational levels so for example if you can see one electron moves to this vibrational level the other one moves to this so they're all going to move to different vibrational levels now before the energy is emitted before that's that's done all these electrons they decay and they come to the lowest vibrational state of singlet excited state so before the emission they're going to reach to a to an equal level they're going to be on the lowest vibrational state now from this lowest vibrational state since they moved to different vibrational state from different vibrational state of the ground state to different vibrational state of the excited state but while emitting they're going to move from a single vibrational state to different different vibrational states of the ground state so as these electrons move from a single vibrational state of the uh, excited electronic state to different vibrational states of ground state they're going to emit photons of different energy different lower energies as compared to the energy absorbed which corresponds to a longer wavelength resulting in fluorescence and that fluorescence can be that can be analyzed using fluorescence spectroscopy so this is the basic principle behind fluorescence spectroscopy now for atomic species this we were talking about the molecular species for atomic species the process is going to be similar but since the uh, atomic species they do not have different vibrational levels they only have um, electronic states and uh, excited electronic state and ground electronic state they do not they no, do not have different vibrational level for each uh, each uh, electronic state so the the wavelength of the emitted photon is usually similar to the incident radiation or to the absorbed energy it is going to be similar the wavelength is going to be similar and this process of re-emitting the absorbed photon is known as resonance fluorescence and however it is um, a characteristic of atomic fluorescence it can also happen in molecular fluorescence next let's look at the instrumentation for fluorescence spectroscopy so the instrument that's used to analyze fluorescence or to measure fluorescence is known as fluorometer now fluorometer is used to uh, analyze or measure different parameters of fluorescence for example the intensity of fluorescence is measured and also the wavelength distribution of emission is also measured during fluorescence spectroscopy now there are two different types of fluorometer that exist one is filter fluorometer which uses a filter to isolate the incident light and the fluorescent light and the other one is known as spectro 
fluorometer which uses a monochromator uh, to isolate the incident light and the fluorescent light now in both the case both the cases in both kinds of uh, fluorometer the basic method or basic instrumentation is the same basic uh, strategy is the same so the light from the excitation light source which can be either laser it can be led it can be uh, it can be different kinds of lamps like xenon arc lamp or mercury vapor lamp it is it passes through the first monochromator or first filter which is an excitation monochromator or excitation filter now from this monochromator it is going to pass through the sample now your sample is going to absorb a certain portion of the light that that is that passes through the sample and some of the molecules of, of the sample they are going to show fluorescence now uh, this fluorescent light it is uh, scattered in different direction and some of this fluorescent light some of this emitted fluorescence it is going to pass through the second monochromator or second filter which is known as emission monochromator or emission filter and from this second monochromator second filter this fluorescent light or this emitted light it is going to pass through a detector which measures the fluorescence and which uh, which passes the data to a computer and that computer can generate a spectrum or a, uh, a fluorescent spectrum now this detector that is used in uh, fluorescent spectroscopy it can be either single channeled channeled or it can be multi channeled now this single channel detector can only measure the intensity of one wavelength at a time while the multi channel detector can measure the intensity of all the wavelengths simultaneously so if you're using a multi channel detector you don't need an emission monochromator but these days the most versatile kinds of uh, fluorometer that are used they consist of two monochromators one excitation and one emission monochromator and they contain uh, the, the excitation light sources the xenon arc lamp which provides a continuous excitation and using this kind of fluorometer which consists of two monochromator you can uh, generate both excitation spectra and also the fluorescent spectra at the same time so in case of a typical fluorescent spectroscopy or uh, or to measure a typical fluorescent spectra which is the emission spectra uh, the the excitation wavelength passing through the excitation monochromator that is kept constant and the emission the emitted one is varied so the emission monochromator is going to scan all the emitted light passing through the emission monochromator and that is passed through the detector and the emission uh, spectra or the fluorescence spectra is generated now in order to develop an excitation spectra the the uh, the wavelength that's passing through the, or the light that pa that's passing through the emission monochromator or the emitted light is kept constant and the excitation light excitation wavelength is varied so the so that the excitation monochromator can scan all the excitation wavelength at a constant emitted light now in case of emission uh, spectroscopy since you're uh, keeping the excitation wavelength constant what you can do you can generate different excitation sorry you can generate different emission spectra for the excitation wavelength of different range and then you can combine them all together to develop a emission map now let's look at some of the applications of fluorescence spectroscopy so fluorescence spectroscopy is routinely used to study the, to study the structural changes in conjugated system in aromatic compounds and in rigid planar compounds uh, the changes that occur due to alteration in temperature or ph or ionic strength or solvents or ligands now uh, fluorescence spectroscopy is also used um, to detect or analyze the various compounds present in air or water for example to detect the presence of heavy metals in water like mercury now in this case usually atomic fluorescence spectroscopy techniques are used now in analytical chemistry um, fluorescence detectors are usually used in hplc which is high performance liquid chromatography now fluorescence spectroscopy can also be used to monitor the quality of water uh, by detecting the presence or the levels of organic pollutants in water.